Hey everyone, uh, this is Kathy doing another quick video in my automation series. This is a quick show on how to do a aura. Now obviously auras are predominantly used by players for things like pardons, now they're aura protection. However, they can be used by monsters as well for certain ones and I'll show you an example of more of those I've built as well. Uh, so for this you need dynamic actor effects and active auras, the two main modules that you use. So what happens is the active auras module, it basically allows the dynamic actor the effects through dynamic actor effects uh, or DAE to be spread over a defined area. So in this case, an aura of say 10 foot and a pad in. So what I've got here, I've got my pad in. I'll try to get rid of that. Um, it's not really set up properly, it's just a, a test. Um, so let me show you setting one up. So it's going to create an item, let's call it a feature, and it's going to call it Aura. So as I mentioned before, when you're doing things like working with actor effects, you should always work from the items tab. The reason is if you try to edit something on the character to on the token itself, and that's on the um, scene, it won't let you edit it. So if you have, if you're trying to add an actor effect or a dynamic actor effect, for example, there won't be the option to do so. So always edit from here. Um, so first of all, this leaf blank, effects leaf blank, it's pretty simple, this is going to be a pure DAE feature, so we just go new, I want this to be equipped, so what this means is when I, when this feature is on the character, it automatically comes as equipped, I'm going to go effect, so with pardons, so the great thing about this, it has all these modifiers. So you add your charisma modifier to uh, the same as this. So that tells me what you actually add in. And now I just need to go down to find it uh, a bit is safe. There we go. So what this does, this, this effect so if anyone who has this aura effect, that's at all their saving throws, you add plus abilities dot charisma dot modifier. Okay, simple as that. And as you see, is this new tab labeled auras. Is this an aura? Yes, it is. Who are you targeting? I'm targeting allies. Let's pull this down a little bit. Um, your grid size, aura is 10 foot. Now you can choose to specify to check by alignment or by creature type. Don't do any of those. And you can choose to add it apply once or during the combatant's turn, things like that. So we've done that. So that's the aura setup. Now what should happen if this works? I drag this on. First things first, you see now I've got the aura shown as my passive effect. What should happen? Yeah, see here? They now have the aura shown on theirs. Which is quite cool. Now the thing is what you will notice is that the same throws don't seem to have changed at all the stats they should be. Because it doesn't happen until you roll. So you can see here, his charisma is a plus two bonus. So if we roll Jambe, let's give a deck save. Okay. Well, that's just how oh, fun, isn't it? Oh, save it. Hmm. Don't think it's like in the aura. 
Let's talk a little. Let it back up. Yes, it's not like in the aura. Now you'll see me troubleshoot why it's not like in the aura. So. It might be because I try it without the data. I think it probably should need data, but we'll see. Let's make a save. No, it's not working, is it? That's very bizarre. Space. Now, we can check this over for expediency. It's going to go to the one I have pre built, which is basically from the DAE uh, compendium to see if there's a reason why it is showing like this. Uh, that's why, because I'm not calling it. So. What I've done is just trying to, it's trying to add that, but there's nothing there, so that's how I learn things. Okay, let's try this again. So, go to Jam Bay, got the aura, or save. Well, you will say for me. You will. There we go, look. Finally worked. Better troubleshooting. But you can see here, look. Um, so I got 1d20 plus 6, which would be her strength modifier saving through her. And then plus 2, which is from the aura. If you go look at it, it shows that we got this bonus. And it tells you here it's actually adding plus two. Now what you'll also notice is if I move him to here, he's now out of ten foot of this jumbo. Should be one more. You can see that it's been removed. So it's, so it's basically an invisible aura walking around with him. Now you can do something a bit more fancy with this. Uh, so I have one that um, applies a feature to them. So I'm going to show you this with... Oh, I my compendium for this. Um, what's this? Uh, one. Easiest one. Added. That's a little upsetting. Oh, that's my little oh. bit in there. It's not showing that. That's a little sad. So those are my companions help all through. For some reason. I'm missing some stuff from certain companions. 
But actually, I'm just going to instead. So, sorry for playing around. So what I can do, if I go back to this, because there's an aura already there, well, I can add this. I'm going to add an effect. In addition, we can add this many as you like. What I like to do is add a token magic. So token magic is a separate module. Um, what it does, it allows you to apply certain effects to tokens. You see here, there's a specific setting in DE that says to macro token magic and gives you a list. So what I can do now is I can apply any of these um, features to the um, people with this aura. So I'm going to make it glow, which is what I usually use. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't always update, but you can see it works at the moment I move in, she's going to move in there. So the reason I do this is so that for players, it is clear and concise. You can literally see who has this aura. And you can also see that he's within 10 foot of enemies and they don't have the aura because it's specified allies only. And if he moves away, aura goes away. Stays by himself though. So I like to say that um, you can have different different types of auras. It can also be done for um, it can also be done for monster auras. So certain monsters have auras that were when applied um, sorry my words. Uh, it's useful to know when you're in an aura for a creature. Uh, so like the corpse flower or ghoul, uh, ghast all have always if you're in a certain amount of range you're in there so what you can do you can just set a token magic um, on there if you don't have the automation to do it or don't want to set a token magic and then as you're doing it as they come into contact with it you'll see that will light up or effect and you can Token magics are very good. I believe you can actually add your own, but that's beyond me. Um, but for now, yeah, so. So I know I've used a few ones before, but. We wanted to go. Let's go. Let's go with fireflies. Now it's case of playing around with see what you like. Going back here. Don't actually see any effect. Okay. Maybe that one doesn't work in that manner. Let's go with this instead then. Let's hope this one works. And there you go. So useful for things like the um, auras for. Um, elementals. So this could be an example of you have this order set if someone gets them in range of a fire elemental their token becomes like this. Might be a bit off-putting but at least you know as a visual reminder oh actually they're in the aura, I need to remember this. Yeah that's that's it, it's a quick um, video well it's quick anyway. Uh, showing you auras um, and active wars and how they work, especially with paladins. Now, I will quickly show you one last person. This is my one of my players um, from my Curse of Strata campaign. You can see that he is a so Oath of the Ancients paladin. So, he has two types of auras. So, he has aura rewarding and aura protection. If I go, so they, they automatically they show and they've got an aura. 
as you see, aura warding on there. Now, what aura warding does, it gives them resistance to spell damage. So, I'll quickly show you that by targeting them. And let's throw a fireball to us all. Make it advantageous, make sure it hits. So she, it hits them. So what would happen now when I roll damage? You see that I rolled 9 damage there. However, according to MIDI QL, which calculates these sort of things, only 4 damage has been applied. Look at her hit points. She was on full. She's on 38. She's now got 34 rather than taking the full 9 damage. That is the magic resistance that will come to effect, so anything that is designated as spell damage is halved. Obviously you, you ran down. Uh, but this is one of the things, you, things with MIDI QL, it automatically does that sort of thing for you. So yeah, this is a, I guess kind of a, a quick whistle stop tour of DAE and Active Auras. I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like, um, comment, and let me know if there's anything you want to see. Right. Well, thanks for watching, and cheers!